When we start into our careers, we are immediately picking up habits and uh, preferences and biases that are going to stick with us for decades. At least carpenters do, at least I did. And I want to talk about five tools that have come to me later in life that are way better than what I had started out with. And three of those were actually gifts that were sent to me by people on the channel that I have adopted as being the best available for their use. Now these five tools are not that expensive. Now, when I say that expensive, a couple of them do cost some money, but some of them cost very little and they all make a big impact. I'll do a video in the future, probably more than one, about tools that I didn't have because I couldn't afford them. But the ones I'm gonna show you right now, I could have afforded them had they, number one, existed, and number two, if I had known about them. The first one I wanna talk about is this little Makita chainsaw, a cordless chainsaw. I would have never believed that I would be pleased with a cordless chainsaw. And yes, it is a little pricey. I mean, it costs money, and probably that was one reason I would have been slow to adopt it. But the other reason was, it's only been recently that a cordless chainsaw became a real tool, and this is a real tool, and it's convenient, and it doesn't get mixed gas in my toolbox, and there are times that a carpenter has to work rough and fast but you don't need to carry your big saw with you just for cutting a beam. I'm not gonna to try to go into the specifics of how this thing works. It's a 36 volt. It takes two batteries, the same ones that are running on the rest of my Makita platform. I really like this. Bottom line is when I pick it up with charged batteries, turn it on and pull the trigger, it goes and it cuts and I can keep it sharp and it uses a little oil as every chainsaw must, but I don't have to fuel it and it is plenty powerful for what I have to do with the saw this size. It doesn't look like much, but it's a real saw. This one was sent to me from Australia, and so was this belt, by the way. But this is a Rufus. Rufus, I guess I pronounced this incorrectly. But this is the most brilliant adaptation of an existing set of carpentry tools I've ever seen. I wish I would have got it as a young man so I would have more facility with it now, but it's a, a squangle and a speed square and a tri-square and a T-bevel square and a torpedo level all in one tool. It, uh, it adjusts, it has hip, valley, common rafter designations, it has degrees, you can scribe with it. The two little vials register perfectly, so it's a torpedo level in both directions depending on where you have it set on its blade. So. It carries easily in the pouch, although I haven't quite got comfortable with that yet, but I'll tell you this, this is brilliant with a capital B, and like I said, if I would have had it sooner, I would be using it more, but I use it every chance I get. This Tahima chalk box is an order of magnitude better than any other chalk box I've ever messed with, and Nathaniel brought it to me. He's a friend of mine in Eugene that I met through the channel, Japanese, I think, they thought of every single thing. And uh, the people who had told me earlier, get a Tahima chalk box, you won't be sorry. I thought, okay, okay, it's just a chalk box. And then like with so many other things that finally overpower our natural inclination to think my way is best. When this thing showed up by about 20 minutes in, I thought, man, I really wish I would have had this a long time ago. I would have saved a lot of money on chalk boxes over the years if I would have had one of these. First thing is, it feels good in the hand. It just, it fits. Second thing is, the hook works. I mean, it gets a hold in just about any way you want to get a hold. It's just better. Slightly bigger. I see that's got bent open a little bit. And they've engineered this thing so that the hook will just kind of wet itself right to the machine like that. Maybe the other side will do a little better today. Yeah, look at that. That rides in your bags. The cap on, cap off for filling is instantaneous and doesn't leak. It's got this rubber gription thing so when you drop it, you don't break it and you don't mar the floor. It is a gear drive that works and it seems to be a little more resistant to moisture. And the string leaves a nice, tight, tidy mark. It doesn't shed the chalk early and it holds onto the chalk a long time. I don't know what else to brag about except there's nothing that these guys didn't think of on this. 
it fits into the bags. It's not as bulky as some of the great big ones you can buy. So you guys that told me this earlier were right, and I want to thank Nathaniel once again for bringing this thing down to me. So let me double down on this. You know, you can buy gear drive chalk boxes. This thing is fast. Did you even see that? It is fast and it seems to be more durable than plenty of those that you buy with high hopes and then, you know, three days later you throw it as far as you can because it just stopped working. I haven't thrown this yet and I just don't think I'm gonna end up ever doing that. The next item was another gift from someone on the channel. It didn't come from Buckaroo directly and in the confusion of my life, I, I think I lost the actual name of the fellow that sent this to me, but I love this buckaroo belt. Now in fairness, I might have loved any belt better than the leather belts I was using that spread the load out and was lined with felt. I don't know if anybody else makes those, probably, but this has been a game changer. It's increased my comfort and, and my hips don't hurt and it just feels good and it holds the gear where it ought to be. So. If I would have known about this sooner and if I wouldn't have been such a tightwad, I probably would have been sporting a buckaroo belt a long time ago. The last one I want to point out today is this podium ladder. I knew they existed. I discounted them as being, you know, a safety sally response to what a guy ought to be able to do until I bought one for my dad so he could more safely prune his fruit trees and he refused to use it. I mean, that's my dad. If he didn't already own it, he wasn't interested in it. And I have some of that too. I don't know if you do or if you know people that do, but. So I got this for dad and then one day I climbed up on it. And they are absolutely, in many cases, worth the extra effort of carrying a little more fiberglass onto the job. Because you get up here it's just, you can actually do work. You can reach out within reason. It's just, now not every case, sometimes you just need a step ladder and nothing but a step ladder. But I can admit now that in a lot of cases, if I don't have this with me, I think, darn, should have grabbed the podium ladder. So if there's a takeaway here, it's this. We don't know everything that we're going to know someday. And we don't have every skill yet that we're going to have someday but maybe there's something we can do right now to adjust the status quo that, we're set, that we are settled into in order to make things better for us and everybody around us by trying something different once in a while just because we get the chance. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.